Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Cascading Style Sheets tutorial. Here I'm going to show you pretty much every property we have not covered in the previous two tutorials. If you didn't watch those, definitely check those out. What I'm going to do first here is going to define some background properties, and I'm just going to use the shortcut background property, and I'm going to say I want my background to be red, and just jump it into it here. I'm going to say I want to use a graphic called Little Brain in my background. You can see here, I don't have to put commas in here or anything. I'm going to say that I do not want it to repeat, and I'm going to explain what all this means here in a second. And I'm going to say I want it in the top left corner. And if I file save it, you can see background's red. There's the little brain graphic. It does not repeat either horizontally or vertically, and it's in the top left corner. And basically, you have a bunch of different guys here. You obviously have the background color, which I have here as red. Of course, I could define that also as background dash color colon red if I didn't want to use the shorthand and I could also define the background image right like that using the same little guy I got right here remember this is shorthand up here right here this is shorthand this is the long way of doing it and I could also define background repeat and type in no repeat but this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type in repeat and what the heck let's make this background blue and then you have background attachment which makes the image scroll with the page or stays fixed and let's just type in fixed and that's probably something better to see actually shown here background position and for this guy this can be any color background this can be any image that you'd like to use for repeat this could be repeat no dash repeat or repeat dash x if you just want it to repeat on a horizontal basis or repeat dash y if you just want it to be horizontal or repeat which I'm using right here let's actually do no repeat again just so you can see how the background attachment works and then background position and you can actually use multiple versions of this can be left right center bottom top or you can put in a percentage or you can put in a length those are all the possible values for background position but I'm just gonna leave this again left top say don't have to put any periods or commas inside of there and let's copy this guy let's actually make this gray cut that boink paste all those guys inside of there keep everything nice and neat and then just so I can demonstrate the background attachment which it seems I have a fixation on I'm gonna grab this guy right here and I'm gonna throw him in the body and just like it says this is just a bunch of random text and here I'm commenting out the random text with HTML see I've hidden things all over the place down here that you don't see and if I file save that you can see how the text is here this is gray there's a little image so forth and so on and it's in the upper left hand corner but you can also see that it remains fixed even though I am scrolling over top of that image however if I type in the other option for background attachment which is scroll and reload this guy you can now see that it scrolls right along with the page and disappears so those are a bunch of different ways of manipulating the background pretty much all the ways of manipulating the background and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna delete this guy and now I'm gonna show you all the different ways or bullet types that are available in lists so I'm just gonna create myself an unordered list li and I'm gonna use styles inline and the style you would use to change the bulleted list is list style dash type colon and one of them is DIC close that out and I'm just gonna call that bullet type and as far as I know there are 12 total different types of these guys so I'm gonna put those there on the screen and there's disk circle square decimal decimal leading zero now you know I'm getting them all lower Roman upper Roman lower Greek however as far as I know there is no such thing as upper Greek there's lower Latin upper Latin Armenian and Georgian and then you get to surround these guys with quotes sorry I forgot that for a second there then you have to close off the list box and if you save it boink you can see all the different types of bullets that are available and of course some of them are translating over into this Chrome browser some of them aren't and again this is just the differences between browsers and I'm just trying to cover as many of these guys as humanly possible one thing I have not been talking about much is table styling and that's just not right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a class called table style and you're actually going to see later when I talk about box types and so forth that there are numerous different ways to edit tables because everything in cascading style sheets is technically a box and I'm just defining font family I'm defining that I want the text to align to the left 
I'm going to define that I want padding, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, exactly what the difference is between padding and margins. I'm saying I want the padding on the top to be 5 pixels, and why don't we just have the padding on the bottom be 5 pixels as well. Background color, and here I'm going to define that I want that to be white. I want the width to be 75% of whatever the overall width of the browser is. I want to create a border that is 2 pixels wide. I want it to be solid, and I'm going to show you all the different possible borders that are available to you. And I'm using hexadecimal codes here, so I can use some different colors you may not have seen. Again, just go to Google, type in wiki colors, and this will pop up. I'm going to say that I want the border to collapse, so there are not lines in between each of the individual columns and rows in this table. And I'm also going to define caption, where I want the caption to show up. And I'm going to say that I want my caption to show up on the bottom. Okay, so there is a class that is going to control the whole entire table that I create. That's spell border, right? And then I'm going to define another one called table header. And I'm going to say for this guy that I want the color to be white, and that's the color of the text, not the color of the background. And I want the background color to actually be the same color as this guy up there, so I'm going to jump up there and grab that. And what the heck, let's create another class. It's going to be called Even Rows, background color, and this is going to be like a brownish color. And just so you know, you can put these guys in any order you want. Here the text color is going to be a dark color. All right, so this is going to be styling for the overall table. This is going to be the styling just for the first row or the header row. And then this is going to be styling that I'm going to use on some even rows. So what are we going to do? We're going to come in and we're going to create ourselves a table. Table class is going to be equal to table style. And then, of course, covered this in the previous HTML tutorial. There's a caption, right like that. And then there's my table header class that I'm going to be using. And let's just put in name, scroll that up, street, city, and of course, don't forget to finish off that by closing that guy. And then we're going to create ourselves another row. And then just to shorten this up, I'm going to go like this. However, this time I'm going to step in here, use my class, even rows. And I'm going to go in and let's just change one of these. Close off the table. And you can see it showed up here on the screen. It's a little bit squinched. The reason why is the 75% width that we defined up here. But you can see everything else all fits inside of here. And because I changed the width as I changed the browser, it's going to decrease or increase in size, depending upon if I increase or decrease the size of the browser. And there's the caption that we defined. And I could also put that on the right or the left or the top, just by putting right, left, up, or top inside of here. And you could also see if I went and chopped this guy out of here, that they break all the different things up here inside of the table. So that is a bunch of different ways you can style tables inside of Cascading Style Sheets. And you could also put separate inside of there instead of collapse, but that's the default, so there's no really any reason to do that. But if you just want to drive yourself crazy, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, now I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different cursors that are available, and this is really neat. If you want to really find out how much somebody knows about HTML, start asking them about how to change styling on cursors. First, you have the crosshair, and again, as far as I know, there are 16 total cursors. So let's go and copy this. All right, we got crosshair. Then you have default. There's no real reason to put default in there though. Then you have help, move, and resize, or north resize, northeast resize, east resize, text, pointer, progress, and wait. So those are all the different cursors. And you can see how the cursor changes here. See, crosshairs. There's all the different cursors that are available to you. As you can see, they change as I put my mouse over top of them. So that's kind of neat. It's definitely the type of knowledge you're not going to find many people know. And that right there is the majority of almost every single property available to you in Cascading Style Sheets. Like I said, I'm going to be covering divs and spans, but I have a couple other things here. Basically, CSS treats everything as if it is a box. And every box has the following different properties. They have content, area, padding, area, border, and a margin area. Now the content holds all of your content, including text, images, whatever you got. The padding is the blank area that lies between the content area and the border area. I'm sure you know what the border is. It lies between the padding and the margin, just in case you didn't. And then you have the margin, and that's an optional area that surrounds all the other parts of the box. Okay, so that's the basis of how 
Cascading Style Sheets pays attention to boxes, which pretty much everything is considered a box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some of these so that you can see some of these different box element properties. And I'm gonna call this box element one. Of course, you got your border color. Yeah, let's just make that black. Then you have your border style, and it can either be solid, double, groove, outset, dotted, dashed, inset, or ridges. Those are all of them. I'm going to show you solid. This is going to be kind of a boring type of guy. Border, width, and let's just make that 1.5 pixels. Again, you can also define the width of the border in pixels, the word thin, medium, or the word thick. And then you have background, color, and I'm just going to say gray. Then you have background image. Again, I'm going to use my little brain because I have that saved there. Background repeat. Again, it can be no repeat, repeat dash X, repeat dash Y, or inherit, which means it's going to inherit whatever the property of the parent of this box is. Again, I'm going to say no repeat, background position, and I'm choosing top left a lot just so you can see exactly what's going on here. Line height defines the distance between lines of text within the box, and I'm just going to put 1.8 EM. Font family, you've seen a whole bunch of times, and previously I showed you every single font available, or every single font available on almost every single browser. Anyway, and then there's font style, and the point here is I'm trying to make sure I use just about every single one of these. I mean, this is completely insane. You would never do this in the real world to find all these different things. And then you have padding, which defines your overall width of your padding. And I'm gonna get more into some additional options because you might not believe it, but there are multiple different versions of padding and margins and border widths and border styles. So for example, you could define the different border styles by saying border top style, border right style, border left style, border and bottom style. And you can do the same thing with margin and padding. Like I said, I'm giving you pretty much everything conceivable here. And if I jump down inside of here, I'm going to create a span. I'm going to say class is equal to box element one. And of course, put your quotes around there. And a span is what? An inline tag. And what does an inline tag mean? It means there are no spaces that follow it. And you can see right there, random text is printed inside of here with the brain. Border width, gray, da 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 da. Again, I come in here, change the padding on this, file save, and you can see how this guy moves around inside of here. And I'm actually going to show you, just by changing a couple other things, some of the oddball little ways of moving these guys around inside of here. Now let's actually come in here and throw a break statement. Actually, let's throw two break statements. And with the next one, I'm actually going to make this a little bit neater. Let's make the background color yellow. And I'm actually going to come in here and do some really strange things. Border, top, color. This is going to be really ugly, but that's not the point. Border style. Let's make it double. Just because I can. Border, right, style. I'm going to change that to ridge. Border width. Let's take it up to two so we can see these guys a little bit better. And then we can also come in here. Border, left, width. Just so you can see all the different things available. Thick. Background color. Let's make this cyan. Let's leave no repeat on. Background position the same. Line height, 2 EM, not that it's going to really affect anything. Leave this italic. Leave the margin 25, but margin right. We're going to make that 250 pixels. Padding, we're going to take down to 25. Padding left, we're going to take that to 300 pixels. And now let's look at what this monstrosity became. And you can see there it is. It's all stretched out on the screen. But that's just because of how I got it laid out there and the fact that I'm zooming in on the browser. So there is your little wacky box. You can see all the different things that I did here with the borders and all the weird ways that I affected the padding and all the other different things you have available to you inside of the Cascading Style Sheets property list. Up next, I'm going to go into layout, and I'm going to go more into divs and spans and a whole bunch of other things, and soon you will be a Cascading Style Sheets expert. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.